Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. For those who don't have video, that's my little pet peeve. If I can show my face, so can you. And I've, and I've had. <laughs> Yay, I get to meet everybody. You get to see me without the face mask. I get to see the kiddos in the background. Hi, kids. <laughs> Mr. Zane. I'm going to allow maybe one or two more minutes for people to join us. And I have a very special guest joining us today. So I'm very excited. Can you all see the screen okay? Can you see my share screen? Mm -hmm. I'm not too tech savvy, so I, I love Word. <laughs> That's my, my to go to app. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Zane. Am I saying your name properly? Yeah, you are. My camera is not so good, so this is all you that's, can see. That's okay. As long as you can see me, and I, I don't like staring just letters. I don't know if you're making faces at me. So if you are making faces, at, me, at least I like to see. <laughs> all right, so. I think we're going to get started now. Uh, if people join us, great. I would love for more of us to to gather and and, and share the wealth of knowledge. So I want to welcome everybody. I'm Carla Romero. I am the, as you may know me as DOFI. DOFI is an acronym for Director of First Impressions, aka I'm the receptionist. <laughs> Um, just to give you a little bit of background about myself, and then I'd like to get to know you guys a little bit better as well. I come from the five diamond, five star hotel industry, of which um, I was pretty much born and raised into it. My father was in it since he was 20. They had me when they were 21, so I was literally born in the industry. So coming from a guest perspective, client perspective, to actually an employee perspective, I've learned so much from both sides and I was able to continue that my tra trajectory in the hotel industry here in Houston. I worked at the Omni Houston Hotel on Four Riverway uh, as well as Wyndham and uh, Hilton's and um, Camino Real uh, hotel chains which is in El Paso. That's where I started my career. Um, that being said, to me the most important thing ever is customer service. Uh, customer service is everything. Um, my priority has always been the clients. And my priority has always been the callers. So I started my career as a PBX operator, making a whole whopping $4.25 an hour without my father knowing, because my father was the in charge of the hotel at the time. So he didn't realize I, started, I joined the, the, the team until he signed my paycheck, and he was not too pleased about that. But um, I carried on my career. I made my way up all the way to catering sales manager, which I trained many people whom are still in the industry. Um, God willing, they don't get laid off. But they, we've had some other uh, vice presidents, CEOs, and my brother included in, in, in that little, um, little group of uh, people that I, I helped train along the way. So the purpose... Of this, but before I get into the purpose, I'd like to get to know each and every one of you. So if you can take just a few seconds or a few minutes, Miss Melissa, um, we'd like to get to know you a little bit more. I, I know a little bit, of, but I've shared with everybody else a little bit about yourself. Okay. Hi, everyone. How are y'all? Good. Thank you. Uh, my husband, Curtis, and I uh, joined in actually back in January, but we weren't able to take our exams until June with all the COVID things that happened. Um, we are dual agents at the moment. I am a neonatal nurse practitioner along with Blessy, who you can see down on the screen there. We work together. And she's actually the one who said, hey, let's do real estate. Um, so I came home and told my husband about it. And he said, OK, I'll do it with you. We work very long hours and um, have to be away from our families and have a lot of ethics and things in the job that we do. and so. For Curtis and I, this was a way to transition away from that, um, still make a good living for our family, have more quality time, and uh, work toward retirement. 
so we're just getting started. We've done a few open houses. I have a few leads on some rental properties in Katy, and I'm just trying to learn it all and soak it all up. Welcome aboard, Melissa, Curtis, and Blessy. Mr. You. Zane, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, just not much about me. Uh, I'm Zane. Uh, hello, everybody. I was in the retail industry for about 10 years. I recently quit my job from Dillard's here in First Colony. I was a men's ASM over there. And I recently started uh, real estate about a month and so ago. Uh, back home, my father used to have a real estate agency as well. And he was keep telling me since five years to start that. And finally, I did it. Welcome aboard. I'm glad. Miss Blessy. I know you're probably busy with the kiddos, getting them ready for school, but if you could just uh, tell us a little bit it's about okay. yourself. Yeah, no problem. Like Melissa said, um, my name is Blessy Kirian. So I'm trying to um, do some real estate. Um, right now I do have a full-time job as an NNP, but hopefully in the future want to move into real estate completely. I'm hoping and praying for that. <laughs> um, yeah, busy with the kids, but it's okay. That's why I really want to go into real estate just so that I have more freedom, freedom and be home more. Um, but so far, like Melissa also said, I've also held a few um, open houses and um, looking really forward into diving into more time into real estate. Well, and welcome. That's basically it. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so well, much. I'm glad to get to know everybody a little bit more. I know with the hustle and bustle of the office, sometimes you may come in and I'm always glued to the phone. Um, glued to the phone because I'm taking care of those clients that. Uh, maybe putting some uh, nice little greens in your pockets and your bank accounts and your retirement accounts. That's the whole purpose of this call. Uh, those of you that are here are also in the PC program. And one of the, the transitions after you finish Ignite is to start on your property desk or phone duty um, as we have here. Not very many, uh, actually I don't think I've heard of any other brokerages that provides with this. Um, I may be wrong, but this is the first one I first started here, so I think it's a great tool because everything that you learn in Ignite transitions right over onto Property Desk and it helps you guys be a little bit more comfortable with uh, overcoming objections. And then since you don't have them face to face yet, you can kind of start shaking a little bit, but don't let them see it. Don't, don't let their voice shake, just your hands. Um, and it's starting to build your database, your business is your database, your database is your business. I know we say that a lot here, uh, but it's true. Um, I, I've been in sales forever as well, and it's always about building relationship. It's not so much about making money much more than building a relationship because that's where in the long term, the money comes in. So um, the purpose of this class essentially is to provide expectations, uh, what is required, uh, what I look for and I normally listen for, and just to get you to be more relaxed with the whole process. Uh, today, I finally, I'm able to get um, Ms. Zoe Reyes, she is amazing. She's one of our rock star realtors and she used to be in the PC coach at one point. So she can give you a little bit more of her perspective and answer any agent related questions that I'm unable to answer for legal purposes. I don't have my license yet. So therefore I cannot answer some of the questions you guys have and I know you have amazing questions. So she's gonna jump on board about 5.45 for a few minutes so we can take advantage of her time and, and pick her brain and, and her success stories. Now the great thing about property tests or phone duty is that you don't necessarily have to be a new agent to be to partake in property desk. You can be a seasoned agent. If you're having a lull, oftentimes our seasoned agents, whether they've been here 10, 15, 20 years, whatever the case may be, they're like, hey, I need property desk. So some of the requirements for property desk are A, obviously you guys are in Ignite, finish Ignite, because a lot of the scenarios that you'll see in real life are there. There's a lot of scripts. There's a, that like, we can't stress enough. Script practice, I know it's difficult right now because we're not in the room and the energy is not the same as it used to be. And I miss that so much. But you are right now in, 
in front of each other. You can take your y'all's information. You can make your own little group and start script practice. The more you do script practice, the less script that you sound. Sounds silly, but it's true. Um, now, another thing with that, as you, as you transition to property desk, we need to ensure that there, every single month you request to be on property desk, that you do keep taking your classes, whether it be command, this class counts towards it, whether it's uh, uh, team meetings, we require two team meetings per month to continue uh, partaking and to be put on the, the calendar for the following month. The reason why is because we like for you guys to continue your relationship with the market center because there's a lot of tools. I don't know if you've heard some of the team meetings. This past team meeting was amazing. It was all about short sales. I have learned so much about this past team meeting. I had no idea. It's like mind blown. And just the level of experience that we have in this office. And now you get to see those faces, Sharon Parker, with Nona Smith, Dan Goon, they've been with this company for 20 years. And, and the great thing about this office is that regardless whether you're here for two, three, five, 15, 20 years, everybody's willing to help each other out. We're here to lift each other up. We're here to make sure that you become successful business owners and, and make your business thrive to, you know, your wildest dreams, your wild imagination. So, um, that being said, I'm gonna stop sharing this for a second. Um, let me give you, actually, let me scroll down for a minute. I apologize, this is my first time sharing the screen. So I'll move you this way and maybe this will work, yes. So uh, our office hours, did I make you guys dizzy? Sorry. <laughs> our office hours are Monday through Friday and we break down uh, property desk into three different shifts. For the weekdays, it looks like this. Um, I send you a reminder the day prior. If you speak different languages, please email me at the front desk which language you speak as well because we are such a um, diverse community. We always like to make sure that the client feels as welcome as possible. If English is not their strongest language, we often like to pair people that that do have a, a strong language. So um, yesterday I had a lot of Spanish and Cantonese speaking um, clients. So a very, very, very little English. So I had to partner them with, with the right people. Um, I speak gibberish, so you know. <laughs> um, so just so you know, I speak two fluent language, languages, Spanish, English is my second language, and I did learn uh, Italian and French, so I can understand it more now than I lost. I lost the speech since I've never, I haven't practiced it, but I can understand it, read it, and write it. Just don't speak it as well anymore. So um, on Saturdays, we are open seven days a week. On Saturday, we're here from nine to five, and the shifts are broken down like this. On the weekends, our weekend receptionist, her name is Bria. She's my little ball of sunshine. I love her to pieces. She's always so giddy and happy and bubbly and she's just extra energy. She's amazing. Um, and on Sunday, we are open from 12 to five. Now, obviously due to COVID, we are not having people come into the office and, and, and take do the property desk duty at the property desk we're actually transferring all the calls to your cell phone. So please make sure your phones are charged fully. Please make sure you're not in the bathroom while the phone rings. Um, it's not nice to hear toilet flushing as someone's trying to tell you their life story and how much they want to spend. Um, and just so you know, oftentimes I'm not able to make the, hey, this is Carla, I have a call for you because I'm the phones are ringing off the hook that I will just transfer, all you'll see is the main number. So and the biggest tip I always tell everybody, please, 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 as soon as you introduce yourself, take the number down. Um, see. Do any, I'm gonna stop here for a second. Do any of you have any questions? 
at the moment? No? No. Nope. Comments, concerns? Nothing yet? Okay. Um, I'm going to show you something else here. Hi, Mr. Norman. Hello. Hey, you're good. Okay. So... I thought I was going to be able to do this. It's not letting me. I wanted to go ahead and, and uh, sorry, it's not letting me share the other screen I wanted to share. So I'm going to take it a little step further. How of our most often asked questions um, is, for example, by when do we need to turn in our sheets? So I don't know if any of you have seen. I was trying to share with you what the sheet looks like, but it wouldn't let me share the screen. So bear with me, I'm gonna kind of bring it up to the camera right here. This is what the property test sheet looks like. And if you see this portion right here is where it requires the two team meetings and the two meetings that you attend. It does require signatures. So I believe Nikki right now is signing those for you. The bottom portion is where you place, it's very important, the shifts that you cannot work. For example, if you are dual career and you cannot work on weekdays, you're only available on weekends, just put here Monday through Friday, not available. Now, what's going to happen once you put in all your information, and one more thing, please make sure you put your name on it. We're good, we're not that good. <laughs> okay, there's, you cannot believe how many times we've seen sheets without a name. If it doesn't have your name, I'm sorry, we can't put you in the calendar. So what's going to happen once this is turned in, right now you can just scan it to me, take a picture of your phone, email it to the front desk at kwsw.com, and uh, Miriam will go ahead and uh, upload the information based on the criteria. It's going to produce a calendar. So if you're only able to work weekends, that's obviously less um less time that less chances for you to be on the desk. Now, if you have no uh, limitations, then the computer will actually generate it so there's no uh, favoritism and you'll get more shifts. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce everybody to Ms. Zoe Reyes. And Ms. Zoe Reyes, like I did with everybody else, can you, um, can you show your beautiful face? Okay. I got to show mine and you get to show yours. Hi. <laughs> this is Ms. Zoe Reyes. Um, Ms. Zoe, if you don't mind, I, I kind of was bragging about you earlier, but if you don't mind telling everybody a little bit about yourself. Uh, sure. Uh, let's see. I've been an agent, I don't know, five, five years, six years, been a little one the whole time. Um, I actually do property time every month. To turn in my little sheet, but so yes, I've been doing it for uh, probably a couple of years now. And I mean, at this point, normally I can get close a couple of things every month just by you know, three or four uh, showings every or not showings, but shifts. Anything else? Okay. Well, I told you used to be part of the PC coaching program for a little while. Yes. Huh. She's like, oh, yes. Did you forget about that? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Um, before Nikki was the PC coach. And, um, yeah. Great. I love helping new agents. Yeah, she's uh, full of information. And um, I, the, my very, very first property uh, desk uh, training we did, we had a full house in here. And it was Kamal, Zoe, and myself here at the front desk. And there was a lot of information. And, uh, and Zoe brought in a lot of aha moments for myself. I had no idea what it took as far as to get more information. The more information you get from the caller uh, that will actually, you build a better report and, and the more business you get. If you don't get that particular deal, essentially you'll, as a, you build a relationship, you'll get, they'll remember you. So the whole point is for you to be top of mind and, and be constantly with them because with the phone call, even though it's on the phone, it, you make a huge impact. When I answer the phone, I always always like to use the analogy of, of a relay race. I, I answer the phone with a lot of energy, a lot of, oh, absolutely, let me kind of connect you to a, one of our experts. They'll be able to assist you with that listing. So you're the experts. You have the license. And I make the transition, and you hear, hello? 
that kind of, he dropped the baton and his energy's gone. It's like, uh, I thought you were supposed to transfer me to an expert. What happened? <laughs> so uh, make sure you keep up the energy. And um, Ms. Zoe, what are some of the questions that you think are most valuable and, and that can actually make the connection better with the caller on the other end? Um, you know, with, with property time, you know, you've got your people who are just going to call and just want information. Um, in my opinion, if, as long as you, of course, give them what they need, but then tease them enough to want to use you more, right? Um, so a lot of the times they'll call in and say something like, um, hi, I'm calling about the house that's over there by Beltway 8. And I'm like, okay, can I get a little more context with this? And they're like, yeah, 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 it's over there by Aldi. Like, uh, okay. So in, in that, yes, it's a pain and it can, but that's going to give you extra time to be on the phone with them um, asking questions. Okay, well, I pull it up, you know, when are you looking to move? And that's where they'll start kind of feeding you all the information. So have your questions ready of what you're going to need because while you're on the call, you want to pre, you know, pre-qualify them. Um, you know, in Ignite, you learn a lot of scripts. To me, the scripts are going to be, or the, is, is where it comes in handy the most because you don't have a lot of time on the phone with them. But if you ask the right questions, then, you know, sometimes Carla will, will get, you know, 15, 20 calls and they're back to back. Mm -hmm. um, and if you schedule 20 appointments, that's a lot of driving that they might not even be, you know, ready to, to, to be looking at them. And so I always use the, you know, well, let me find out. I want to make sure I don't waste your time. Really, I don't want to waste my time. Um, but I want to make sure we don't waste your time. Let me find out if the house is still available or let me, you know, it, and that gives us the opportunity to, what's the best number for me to reach you? What's the best email address so I can confirm our appointment? In everything, I'm just looking for more information, more data so that I can, if I don't, nail the call within that first you know 30 seconds minute on the phone we can you can at least call them back and now you have everything that you need when you ask what's the best email naturally people are going to give you the best email so i normally don't say what's a good email or what's your email address it's what's the best email for me to confirm the appointment or for me to send you more information um, some will say well i don't have email i only have text okay, well, that's completely understandable. Um, you know, I'll shoot you a text if you'd like more information or want, you know, the, you know, in, more info on some of the homes that come on the market. I can definitely set you up on a portal and we can, you know, get you the, and for that, we'll need an email address, stuff like that. that so that'd be great. Question? Yeah, so that'd be a great opportunity for you guys to share your, your app because it's, it's branded to you. And uh, the consumer will then, at that point, based on all your points, that you'll see the more of the trend of what they're looking at. Um, another thing I like to, for everyone's safety, um, I do know, just to let you know, the office is open. Doesn't mean that everybody's going to come in at once. Please don't. I I'm at high risk. Please, I want to be able to be here for my children with this whole COVID-19 mess. Um, I, I have to protect myself, and I want to make sure you guys are protected as best as possible. But uh, is the best practice is to, is when these times, these uncertain times, because you don't really don't know the person they're wearing after their face is covered, um, is to get them to come in a, in a surrounding, a safe surrounding, which is the office. We do have cameras in the office. Um, right now, there are some restrictions as far as how many people can be in the meeting room. Uh, for example, the small room, we can only have two people, that's yourself included. In the meeting room, we can only have two people, yourself included. I sometimes squeeze three, but I separate them as best as possible. In the large meeting room, we can only fit four for the time being. That doesn't mean, like in the uh, Latino communities, the tia, the uncles, the aunts, the cousins, everybody is coming in. Um, just limit uh, to the particular client and make sure they wear their protective gear, their masks at all times. Uh, the uh, other plus to our using our offices is that they'll get the best experience possible because hey, they get to see me. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, but all of our TVs are actually computers. They can 
uh, log on to your dot loop, log on to your email, log on to your command. You can print up of those computers and have the IABS ready for you to sign because you just don't want to open doors for people. And so please let me know if I'm overstepping my boundaries here because I'm not licensed just yet, so I want to make sure I have a referee here to say, hey, sh you can't say that. <laughs> I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Um, but those are just some of the best practices. And I do monitor the calls many different ways. For example, other property groups or agents, if they have too many leads, they send the leads to me via email. So I forward the emails that way. We have a chat room that I follow um, and I the calls that come in. Lately, it's been crazy. Like Zoe said yesterday, um, in the morning time, I think I had, the first person had 12 calls. Now, they could be for the same listing because there was a listing that was like $800 and that went away quick. But that's your, your, that's your opportunity to transition. Well, that's not available. However, what are you looking for? I'd be more happy to find you something that's more suited towards your needs. Um, am I right, Ms. Zoe? Um, now, I know in the first meeting you were talking, and I didn't know this, that there is certain restrictions as far as some of the questions is if you, do you have pets. I had no idea certain breeds of pets were not allowed in, in as far as leases. I had no clue. <laughs> so thank you, Zoe, for letting me know because I, I won't make that mistake whenever that time comes. Um, do any of you have any questions? The whole point of this class is for you guys to engage with us. I would hate to just, so and I have a conversation here, I'd like for you guys to partake. And, or I also want to pick on you guys and I start asking you questions. So I'm good oh. like that. Can you give us a scenario of one of your calls that you ever took so we can know that how will it go? You want to role play, Zoe? Sure, sure. Uh, okay. Well, and, and before you, you um, we role play. So some of the calls, a lot of the calls we're gonna you're gonna get is um, has to do with leases. Um, that's what the majority of the calls. I, I would probably say seventy percent of the calls may, might be leases. Um, that's not to say that you're not gonna get buyers. So I think the last week, uh, last Saturday, I believe it was, um, I did get a, a buyer. With, with buyers, when they call with property time, there's urgency um, because it means that they're, they really want information. So with that, I think I had property time Saturday afternoon, like the 2.30 shift. I was in the office Sunday morning meeting with them. By next week, we, I had them under contract. So, I, you know, I got with the lender and that's the important part of having relationships with the lender. Um, you know, get with your lender, even if it's Saturday afternoon and say, hey, are you available to meet on Sunday morning? Uh, you know, this lender was able to meet and, you know, we got them pre-qualified, got everyone in order and got them under contract within a week. So that's just one, you know, part of this morning, the lead you sent for with that lady, mm -hmm. you know, I've got her schedule. She's a seller. We're meeting Saturday. So it's, there's urgency in it. Uh, you just, when it comes to buyers and sellers, yes, there's also urgency on, on leases as well, but buyers and sellers pay better. So just don't, you know, don't think that, oh, I can wait two or three or four days. If you can get them in the next day, because if they're, they're not only calling you, they're also calling other listings. Okay, go for it. So uh, with today, this morning's call, I remember that vividly. This is very rare that we get. It's, I think it's the first time I, I received this, that specific request. Uh, this caller actually said, hi, I need a female, only female agent, someone that knows the area. So I said, absolutely, let me connect you to Ms. Zoe Ray. She's a specialist and she'll be able to assist you, but is she any good? That's why I said she's an expert. So that being said, I, the one thing when people used to come here at the office and, and would sit, it says, oh, I'm new. Please, please, please don't ever use I'm new. Don't ever use the words I don't know because I just introduced you as the expert. You have a license. You've gone through Ignite. So therefore, you should know the majority of the scenarios. Will it be situations that you don't know the answer to? Absolutely. That happens instead of saying, I don't know. That's an excellent question. Let me find out for you and get back to you. 
I never said I don't know. And I use that line with every single one of you when I don't know the answer, but I'd never say I don't know. Another uh, question is, um, what about that is important to you? So if you don't know the answer, well, what about that is important to you? And that'll get that way because a lot of the times what we're thinking they're asking, they're not really asking. So if I don't know the answer, that's my go-to. And then give me a little more information. What about that is important to you until I figure out what they're truly asking me. Okay, ready for role play? Yes. Okay. Ring ring. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry, is this a business or? or oh, sorry, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, so whenever <laughs> I answer uh, property time calls, uh, Carla or the front desk will, uh, will forward it and I just say, this is Zoe. That is what I say. So I don't know if there's a different way, but I just say, hello, this is Zoe and go. And that's my pet, and that's one of my pet peeves because when I hear hello, I'm like, oh my God, have I reached a professional business or is this a restaurant? Okay. I forgot, I forgot. <laughs> I'm the one that's saying she me. knows me. She's like, oh snap. Okay, ready? Ring, ring. Hello, uh, hello this is Zoe. Oh, hi, Zoe. Um, uh, my name is Carla, and I, I'm actually moving from California and I'm moving to Sugarland. So I, I need to know. Uh, what's available, please. Awesome. Okay, great. So uh, you're moving from California. When are, when are you looking to make the move? Uh, well, I'm within 30 days. I really need to be, it's getting too expensive to live here in, in California. I need to find something and my husband's getting relocated. So um, I don't know what's available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. And when, did, I mean, is your husband, is he He's relocating. Has he already moved, or what's when? When will he be here? He is actually moving before me, so he's going to be staying an extended stay. Um, he's moving in two weeks. Okay. Um, but um, since I might try to take control of this because I don't want him getting us something that I don't like, since uh, I I have my idea of what I want, and what I want is is the law in my household. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. So tell me, tell me a little more. What are you looking for in your new house? Uh, definitely, I need a spacious, open concept kitchen. Okay. I love to cook, and he loves to eat. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I want, um, and obviously, we need a big backyard. Um, I have a golden retriever, a schnauzer, and two German shepherds, so we need a big yard. Okay. That's a whole little animals. How fun. Okay. Anything else? Um, yeah, uh, I'm not familiar with the school. So what are the best school districts in that area? You know, the, the, we do have a couple of school districts. Some of the more, um, it, it just depends on what you're looking for. Some of the more, the schools that are, or the districts that people tend to, to, to look for is going to be Fort Bend. Um, Fort Bend is one of the, the more known school districts. I mean, you've got Lamar. It just depends on what you're looking for. But I can definitely send you some resources so that you can kind of start looking around and see do you have a specific area that you're wanting to be in where's your husband going to be working um he is actually going to be at the uh, energy corridor um mm -hmm. he, he's um he's an engineer so somewhere i know i don't know how far that is from that area but i, I really need a good junior high and a good high school it's hard it's tough to move when the kids are in high school right no completely understand okay and so what's the best email for you so I can get you this information? Uh, yeah, that it's, thank you. It's um, karmacarla at gmail.com. Perfect. And I'm going to assume that your name is, you said your name is Carla. And then yes, Carla, put this number in case we get disconnected. Uh, yeah, it's 281. Actually, let me give you, let me give you my California number. Uh, <laughs> 305. No, that's Miami. Hold on. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember my Irving number. 714. Okay. I moved so many times I can't remember now. It's 714-585-6785. Oh, I remembered. It was from 1990. And then uh, tell me what price point are we trying to stay under? Uh well, that's the thing. I've been doing some searches on Zillow. Mm -hmm. And my goodness, you can get a castle for what we pay around here. Yeah, um, correct. So um, I'd say no more than 450000 
Now, is your husband using a relocation company or is he, um, are you just relocating? No, uh, we're just relocating. They're just sending, they're, I mean, they're paying for it all. So we just choose the company and they're, they're going to go ahead and just take care of it. Okay. And then the, um, so, you know, you mentioned your 30 days is what you're wanting to, to be in the new home. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then have you spoke to a lender by any chance? Um, not in, not in Texas, no. Okay, perfect. Um, and then, so what I'm going to do is I've got a couple of lenders that I work with. Um, I'm going to have one of them give you a call and, you know, kind of go through the, give you an idea of what the rates are looking like and then get you um, pre-approved. So right now, um, if you're looking for a 30 day move, it's going to be really important that we get you pre-approved now. So that once we find the home that you want, we can get you under contract. And then it takes about 30, 30 days to close. A lot of the lenders that I work with might be able to do it in a little bit less. Now, would that be a value to you? Absolutely. The better we can get this situated, uh, I know my kids are going to miss some school. So I just want them to feel as comfortable as possible. Awesome. Okay. So um, I'll get him to give you a call. And then what's a good time so we can schedule a time to kind of go over in more depth what you're looking for. Um, so that way I can get you and your husband uh, kind of get a, a really good feel of what you're looking for and then start sending you some homes. Well, it's uh, I think there's a two hour difference. So um, as long as you don't call me before um, 5 a.m. my time, that'll be great. Okay. okay. <laughs> so between 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time um, to um, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, that'd be great. Perfect, so uh, why don't we do, um, now this, this, this afternoon about, let's see, I've got a four o'clock your time, will that work for you? That's perfect. Okay, I'll give you a call at four, and um, will your husband be available as well? Um, he, he could probably join us via Zoom. Yeah, perfect. Um, so I will get a Zoom going and I will give you a call. We'll go through um, some areas and that way I can show you, you know, on your computer, what are some areas that that might be what you're looking for, and we can kind of nail down a better idea of what you're what what we want to purchase. Okay. Now, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate your information. Perfect. What's your name again? I'm sorry, I didn't write it down. Well, my name is Zoe. Z O E, and I'll shoot you a text with my contact information, and then I'll shoot you an email so you can have my um, my email as well, phone number. That sounds amazing. Thank you so much. Perfect. And scene. Mm -hmm. So, it's as seamless as that. Um, just kind of keep tossing the ball back and forth. Um, and I like how she kept throwing value to my questions, adding value to it. Um, there's nothing worse than getting a person to the other end and just hearing a lot of, um, I don't know. <laughs> Another thing I think we mentioned the very first time is, Zoe, you added a tip saying that for your HER to have at least four tabs open. Um, lease, sell, land, and commercial. Is that correct? Am I mistaken? Uh, well, you can't on HAR, you can't really, at least I haven't figured it out, have multiple tabs open in Matrix. Um, it will kick you out. But normally I will have the, I'll have Matrix open in a tab somewhere. Um, and then what the first question that when they say, hey, I'm calling about the house, you know, 1525 Main Street. And um, I'll say, okay, let me pull that up. Now, is this for lease or to purchase? And then, you know, they'll, they'll go from there. A lot of the times on the search, I'll do the search under um, all properties, the, the quick all properties. So that way it'll show me rentals and um, actual for sale homes. If, no, I, will, I will tell you guys a lot. Oftentimes the calls that I get, they don't know. Right. I saw a house. Is it for sale or for lease? How much do you want for it? Mm -hmm. Right. So if you don't know, a lot of times just go into the all properties is going to be your best your best resource. Miss Melissa, you had your hand up earlier. Did you have a question? Well, I had an interesting experience today. Um, our oldest son lives in Kingsland. He's staying with our in-laws right now. He's been working and he's looking for a place to lease and rent. So he sent me a property to look at um, through Zillow. And I called the realtor and she answered the phone like, hello, like you did just a bit ago. And I was really taken aback and I said, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was looking for the realtor for this property. Well, I'm the realtor. I said, okay, and your name is, you know? 
Oh, uh, Joan, but she was so, it was the strangest phone call. And I ended up laughing about halfway through because it was not anything that I anticipated an agent should have answered the phone with. And then I said, well, I'm an agent here in Houston and I'm looking for a rental property for my son and I just needed more information. And that made her flip the switch. But I thought, why would you even answer the phone that way? It was really off-putting. Now, when she called me back, it was a whole nother tune. So that yeah. was like, like, I'm not going to do that, you know. Well, that's a whole different. And then that shows, as it sets this company apart from others, because you can tell that they're, they're not ready. I mean, if your phone, you guys should be answering your phone like every single person is a, is a million dollar buyer, right? right. Um, because it's, just, it's a first impression and, and I don't mean to sound, you know, keep throwing my, my title in there, but it really truly is. Even when I'm wearing a mask, you guys can't see my face. All you see are my eyes doing this a lot, but do this a lot because I'm actually smiling. Um, so even with the phone, smile. It doesn't matter how horrible of a day you're having. Uh, leave your problems outside. Whenever that call comes in, it's showtime. In the hotel industry, we used to have, um, when I used to work front desk at Night Audit, we used to have this huge mirror with Hollywood signs on it and, and flashlights. Showtime! So every time it's like, okay, it's showtime. Let's go ahead and do this. It, it really is. You have, sometimes you have to put up an act. Um, I'm the least phony person possible you ever meet, so I tell you like it is. Um, but it makes a huge difference in the amount of energy they put in, and that way you get more energy out of them, and and they'll they'll be more able to to give information out. Because if you start like with a wall, they're gonna hit that wall. They're not gonna give you any info. Um, so. The, and not at all professional and as I was looking around her name is all over the rental properties up there and I just thought wow how do you do business <laughs> it was a lesson for sure yeah yeah so uh, we have uh, 15 minutes left I think this is the longest I've ever had this class Ms. Zoe I appreciate you joining me because you know what the last time I did this I literally didn't have anyone to that, that was licensed and that I was getting I'm going, I can't answer that. I'm so sorry. So I really didn't have much material to go with. Um, now I have uh, created some of, if you guys get nervous, I know right at the property does I create a cute little script as how to answer the phone. I always use to spiel, good morning. It's a great day at Keller Williams. This is Carla, how may I serve you today? Obviously. You guys are not going to do that because you're your own business owners. And I always tell people, try to answer the phone. Um, it is your business. How would you like your your director of first impressions to answer your phone call? Pretend you're that person and answer it that way. And then you'll, you'll be surprised of how much information. That's how I get people. I've turned into like Dear Abby um, because people just start telling me their life stories and I'm like, I gotta put you on hold. I'm so sorry. I'll be right with you. I can't make them stop talking. It's just the way you put the energy out is the energy you give in. You get back. I'm sorry. So I misspoke there. Um, are there any other questions anybody may have? Ms. Zoe, any other tips that you'd like to share with the class? So when you say uh, the desk duty, so is there a set of um, set time? Is yes, like I, I think you, you, Rima, I think you joined us a little bit late. I don't, I wrote them down here as well. Let me see. Yeah. You guys can see this. Back in my head right now. Are these, is this backwards to you guys? No, this is perfect. Yeah. Okay. So our office hours are Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5.30. So there's three shifts, um, 8.30 to 11.30, 11.30 to 2.30, and 2.30 to 5.30. If you guys don't have any more questions, I'm going to let Ms. Zoe um, enjoy it the rest of our evening. Um, do you have any other questions for Ms. Zoe before we finish? I have one silly question. I don't know about silly, but I'll take it. All right. So how do we find out about schools? So which school district? matches what address so in har there so har you'll always it'll always show you the schools 
But once you pull up any kind of listing um, in Matrix, let me see if I can pull them up. Um, it'll always say right in the middle school information, and then it'll say the school district, middle school, elementary, um, high school. So that's how it'll show you. If you click the link, it'll actually take you back to HAR's consumer side and give you ratings. Now for me, and I'll be completely honest, <clears throat> I don't know much about schools. So I don't have kids, I don't, they don't, so I don't know what's important about a school to somebody. So when people say, well, I want a good, disc, a good school, I really have no idea what that means. Um, so I always will push them back to, well, we've got HAR. HAR is great when it comes to giving um, resources with uh, more information about what are some good schools in our area. And that's usually where I'll just point them. Oh, yeah, good. Did that help? I think so. Thank you, Ms. Zoe, for um, joining us today, for doing me this. I owe you big time. You're amazing. I always like to hear your amazing answers because she's a rock star. I mean, yeah, I want to be like Zoe when I grow up. Whatever. And I'm happy to help. If you all have any questions, um, just let me know. Shoot me a text or email or something. Actually, email. I'm terrible with texting. Um, and I'll, I'll probably, I'll uh, put the, I'll take off the video, but I'll stay on the call because I'm going to be on my computer anyway. Thank well, thank you, Ms. Alvi. All right. You're awesome. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Yeah. Were you able to get the uh, the hours on the from the whiteboard? Okay, so, so let me break like, this. Let me break this down. So I'm that at home. Uh, yes, like I, I was saying earlier, I think you 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 joined us just a little bit uh, Ted after I said it. Due to COVID nineteen, all the calls are being transferred to your cell phone. So make sure your cell phones are charged all the way. The the ringer is on. Everybody's working from home, so it's understandable. The kids may be crying. Just be careful when there's a cursing husband. That happened to me when I was working from home. It was very fun. I was actually calling a um, title company. I'm like, oh, disclaimer, if you hear barking dogs, uh, fighting cats, or cursing husband, I am working from home. Um, so uh, they took, <laughs> they laughed about it. It was just something that I ran really quick, and I closed my bedroom door so <laughs> nothing else can happen. Um, but yeah, uh, we're, we're transferring the calls to your cell phone for now until God willing, um, this subsides a little bit and we can be in the same room. Uh, again, that doesn't mean that you guys cannot come to the office and, and you're more than welcome to set up a meeting with clients or if you need to come print, we do have some cubicles as long as we adhere to the six foot byline and as long as we adhere to the face mask guidelines. Let me give you my email address so you guys have it, just in case you need to request anything. Um, it's frontdesk at kwsw.com. You better have my number because that's the main line number. So if you don't, better learn it quick. 281-265-0000 is the main switchboard number. So the reason why the shifts are broken down and into like two hours is because we understand you have a life and it, and then you can actually set up after you get your calls, you can set up the one-on-one -on -one with, with the customers to make them into your clients. Now, if, for example, if, um, or if you have a question that needs to be answered by, by your PC coach, because you will have certain scenarios, for example, section eight, Section eight is, is a, a government voucher that's within an allotted amount. We don't turn any business away. We don't say, oh no, I don't do section eight, sorry, bye. We still take the information, we still take the calls. We never turn anybody away. We do have people in this office that have worked with section eight before and you can pick their brain. Serena Chu being one of them, Christine Fuentes being the other. Um, as you guys may have joined, and this past week's team meeting, it was all about short sales. I had, I learned so much about them, like I said earlier, the three agents that were on that um, team meeting, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, please go to kwsw25.com. That's where all of our videos, links, it's all one-stop shop, you guys are more than welcome to review that. 
and get ton of information. Uh, Joe Rothschild, the owner and partner of this office and the uh, Katie office was joined us not too far back. And it was a great story because he started in the real estate at 19 years old with no money and look at him now. He is, he's a big, big shot. He's, he's a great down to earth guy too. Really tall, but everybody's taller than me. So I have nothing to say about that. <laughs> uh, my 12 year old's taller than me nowadays. Uh, <laughs> So do you have any additional questions, comments, concerns? Zoe, did I miss anything? Um, let me see. No, I think you covered most of it. I will say, um, you know, to kind of give you, will it help if I give you a couple of questions um, to kind of pre-screen some of the, uh, the leads that you get? Okay. So when it comes to rentals, um, they can, they can be a handful if you're not careful. A couple of things that I usually will look for, whenever I get the call, um, I'll ask, of course, when are you looking to move? Sometimes you'll get people that want to move 60 days out. I'll let them know a landlord will not hold a place longer than two to three weeks. So if you're looking 60 days out, because that's what apartments are asking, uh, it's probably good that you, you know, we start looking probably at 30 days out. However, you know, I can set you up and, you know, send you what you're, what looks, what you're looking for so you can kind of see what the market's doing. So I'm not putting them off completely. I'm just telling them not right now. I'll also ask them, okay, so are you familiar with what landlords are typically looking for um, their tenant require, their tenant requirements uh, or criteria? They'll say, oh, I'm not really sure. Or we'll just go ahead and tell me. Okay, great. Uh, now credit score, do you have an idea what your credit score looks like? And they'll say, um, it's really bad. Okay, well, what does really bad look like? You know, if it's under 600, I'll typically prepare them that there, a, a lot of the times a landlord may request, and may is very important because we don't make the decisions the landlord does. A landlord may request a double deposit if it's lower than 600. Um, they're also looking for at least three times the rental amount um, when it comes to gross income before taxes. So they say, well, per person, no, no, for the whole household, three times the rental amount. And then I'll say, do you have any pets? And they'll say, hey, yes, I have whatever. Um, when, if they say yes, what kind of pet do you have? And, you know, I'll ask for the breed, the year, and the weight. Now, the reason why I'm asking for the breed is a lot of landlords will not accept an aggressive breed. So it's not necessarily we're discriminating against a dog. It's really that it's insurance will not allow, will not cover a landlord or won't insure a property if they have an aggressive breed. So for that reason, if it's an aggressive breed, they're not going to take it. Yes. Zoe, what if it's uh, like a service, um, like a certified service dog, but it's a pit bull? Because I do have a friend who's had that issue. What have you found uh, in that scenario? I have not been in that scenario. The minute I hear it's a service dog, I stop ask, asking questions. Okay. Because I don't know that, to my knowledge, and I don't know for sure, I don't know that a, a landlord can still say no because it is a certified, um, a certified support animal. Right. Uh, and I'll just make sure that they're prepared to provide that information. Okay. Okay, it is kind of a gray area, isn't it, for rentals particularly? Um, it's not necessarily gray. I want to say that it is very clear. I would probably shoot Marilyn an email and ask her that question. That's a great question. Okay. Um, and Marilyn, I don't really know her email. You... It's risk management at kw.com. Okay. So she's a really good resource. Anytime you have a question, just shoot her an email, and she's really good at responding back. Now, the best, the best may I interject on that that little tidbit uh, being that right now we're in the transition period of uh, adding commissions into command and all these new uh, great things that we're doing I would recommend you also ask your PC coach because I don't there's been there's been a this last couple of weeks there's been what the amount now here's a very exciting thing and I want to make sure you guys know this July we broke records in this office i mean we the amount of of sale volume uh, as far as units in this office is, is never seen before 
So that's kept Maryland extremely busy, um, which is great. August is looking the same. So if you don't get a quick answer from Maryland, don't hold it against her. She's just making sure everybody's meeting compliance so everybody gets paid. <laughs> make sure you put your listings into command and make sure that goes through the proper channels and make sure when you do put your, uh, get ready to submit it, you submit it to Maryland through Dot Loop for now because we want to make sure you get paid on time. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. Sorry, so I didn't mean to. Do no, 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 yeah, that's, that's perfect. Uh, so yeah, so I, I don't know on that one, but for the most part, anytime they say service animal, I just, I quit. Uh, and I don't ask any more questions at that point because I just don't want it. That's a great, like you said, it's, it's not a gray area, but it can be if we show discrimination towards it. And so I don't want to discriminate, so I get nervous. Right. I'll let the, the listing agent do the discriminating. Let them get in trouble. Right. No, I didn't know. I mean, I just did what I, that, what I was told. Uh, then the other question I'll ask, so I always ask for the age, breed, and size of the pet. And then I'll ask, um, so how have you been looking at homes? And because if you ask, just clear out, are you working with a realtor? Nobody's working with a realtor. You know, everyone's going to say no. But um, so I'll say, oh, how have you been looking at homes? Oh, I've just been calling around. Okay, great. And then that's when I'll show them. Because if they're working with an agent, if they say, um, well, I've got an agent, but they're, I just wanted to find out more information. Okay, great. Your agent will be able to make an appointment. Just um, tell them to log in and and give us a call because then I make it sound like it's our listing. Um, give us a call. We're happy to um, give them more information. And and then the the last. So once I know that I'll be able to help them, because the last thing that I want is not to be able to help them. So if I if they say their credit score is, oh, and then I'll ask, do you have any broken leases, evictions, or anything that will show up on your um, rental history or background? If they tell me that they're that they have, you know. They're on, and this is this is true. If they tell me they're on the offenders list, I'll let them know it's going to be a really, it's really going to be tough for them to find a place. And because a lot of people will not rent to someone who's on the sex offenders list, so I prefer to tell them now than to disappoint them later. Um, and I just won't, you know, I won't choose to work with them. Just know that. I know you say we don't, we don't turn anyone away, and we don't. We will help and provide information as much as we can, but we don't have to work with everybody. So we are our own business, and we choose who we want to work with. So it's okay to say, I don't want to work with somebody. And that's that is true. That, that is that absolutely true. value. Yeah, and, and that is true. And I, and I apologize if I misspoke. That was not my intent here because you're right. You may... If someone's being offensive to you or is just very crass and you, you don't feel comfortable, you do have that right um, to say, you know what, I think this is where we're going to part ways. I apologize. But as far as um, when the calls come into property desk, we can't say, oh, it's a lease. I don't do leases. Sorry. Or I don't do the north side. I don't do, uh, I only work on sugar in the Sugarland area. Please don't do that. Because you can always, if you don't want to drive all the way to Spring, you can find an agent over in Spring. You can still get, uh, um, you know, some sort of free money, mail money, um, you know. So that's that's what I, I was implying. So right. I apologize if I misspoke. No, no, no. And and it's and you're right. You know, you you we always want to be able to help, but at the same time we and, and at the same time we're also going to help them by giving them facts. And sometimes the facts are gonna say, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to help you. And and that's just truth. Yeah, I just don't believe that I can. And not because I don't want to, in my experience, this is hard. And if they say, well, I'm not willing to, to pay a double deposit, completely understand, I wouldn't wanna pay one either. Unfortunately, in my experience, this is what they're typically gonna ask for. I would hate for you to waste a lot of time and money on application fees when a landlord's not going to take it with the information that you currently have. Um, so, and then the last piece I'll end it with, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to find out if it's still available. So a lot of the times the house will be, will show active on HAR, but they've already accepted, they've already accepted an application and they're just waiting for that person to sign the lease or pay the deposit. Well, you don't want to go out there and show it if it's already got a signed, um, an accepted application. 
So I'll normally just reach out to the agent via email or text and just, you know, ask, hey, I've got somebody interested in 123 Main Street. Have you accepted any applications on again? And um, agents are really good at responding and saying, no, bring me an, an application or whatnot. If it sounds like they have somebody that's, that's iffy, I'll usually say, hey, I've got somebody that's got a 600, you know, 550 credit score. It's due to a divorce. They're working on their credit. There hasn't been any issues in the last year. Do you think they would consider their application? And they'll usually say, yeah, I think so, or no, I don't, or whatnot. But I try to find as much information out, and I tell people I'm looking for the gold in your application before we submit the application so you don't waste time and money. Make sense? And that's why I brought Zoe, because she's a rock star. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> But that's amazing. That's my experience, um, and I try not to waste time or money. And yes. True. And then waste your time as well, because if they're not, you know, they're not the right fit. We're mm -hmm. serious. I have a question. Like, um, I re just, yesterday I become the, I joined Keller Williams. So um, I got a call from a friend uh, who was leasing, was going to lease her house so she was asking if i have any buyer clients so is there a way i can reach out to other uh, agents just to ask if they have any buyer clients they're looking so for she's, leasing she's leasing out her house yes i mean she has already have an agent and she is gonna lease like she is she's uh first from september i think so she was so, just asking well, if i have any clients so I'm trying to understand. So she's leasing out the house and wants to know if you have a buyer or a tenant for the house. For the tenant, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so she wants to know if you have any tenants. Yes, yeah. Got it. Um, and she, so yes, you can send out, post it on, you know, Facebook, uh, you know, within our closed group mm -hmm. to see. If, but the, the thing is, if you post it, you're not getting any leads from it. Right. So all you're doing is saying, hey, I have uh, a friend of mine, you know, if you have anyone interested in this area, send them this. Uh, but they already have an agent. It's already listed. Uh, that, I don't know if that would help you much unless you start mm -hmm. looking around for, for your own. Okay. And uh, for those of you that, that have not joined uh, our Facebook page, it, I'm going to type here is uh, KWSW closed. Close, I think it's KWSW closed group, right? So mm -hmm. that's a really good resource for information. If you're looking for contractors, um, you know, a lot of times we'll have friends that say, Hey, do you know a painter? Or, do you know a handyman? Just go in there on the left side, there's a little search, type in painter. And in you know, the last year, somebody has asked for a good painter, and you've got all kinds of information there of people that we're recommending, you know, that we've had experiences with. And we have a lot of uh, great resources. So the closed Facebook great page, uh, Norman or Barbara, the admins, they will accept your your friend request. Um, and so like so we said, that's where everybody communicates if they've seen any issues with lenders, roofing, whatever the case may be. Another um, great one, um, the intranet. Your intranet, a lot of things are posted in there. That's where the classes are posted as well. Um, and then the only reason why we made it easier is through through the kwsw25.com site is because you're able just to see a small amount and, and the links are there for the classes. And every single morning I send out uh, reminders of the at least classes for the next 48 hours. And if there's any changes after I post that, just make sure you log on to the website to for any updated links. So that being said, I want to thank you all for coming. Does anybody else have one last question, comment? We're good. Thank you, everybody, for form? joining us. Yes, ma'am. Where do we get the form, Carla, to fill out to submit to Nikki? Uh, actually, uh, for signatures, uh, that's a great question. It's actually located. I can I can scan it to you guys if you don't want to come in. Just make sure you email me at front desk at kwsw.com. Um, and then I'll, I'll scan the form to you. 
fill out your name. I they uploaded a form on the internet as well. Under I believe so, but I don't think everybody has access to the internet just yet, especially Ms. Rima. She just joined us yesterday, right? Yes. So I think we're working on that. So if you email me, I'll be more happy to scan that over. But yes, so is correct. The internet, this, if there's, we have a lot of forms there, and that's where the calendar will be posted after the 25th. The 25th of every month, that's when Miriam collects them and puts the data and it's going to be available before the first of the following month you can prepare your your life and your schedule that way and i will send you reminders a day prior saying hey just friendly reminder you're on tomorrow um did you tell them how to if they can't make a uh... oh thank you zoe see that's why i knew i had you on here so another great thing um is if life happens if you cannot make your shift Please don't post it on a closed Facebook page. Please don't pay anybody to take your shift. Make sure you contact the per anybody that's within the calendar month of the property desk. If you need names and numbers, call me. I'll get those to you. Often call the person that's before you or after you have your shift, and then let's work our way that way. Uh, it is important that the front desk gets notified because I'm the one that has the master at the front desk. If you don't show up to your shift or you don't answer the calls, you are automatically get eliminated from being property just the following month. Because again, everything is, is catered to whomever's calling our clients. If I can't find you, if you don't pick up the phone, I don't mess around. I, I, I'm like, Zoe, this person didn't answer. Can you take the call? Absolutely. So she just took the million dollar sale. Congratulations, Zoe. Uh, <laughs> so it's very important that you please our, our air desk, you, if you are, if the changes happen, or if you just cannot work that day that Miriam put you on, that's okay. The computer spits out the information. We can't control it, but we can make changes. We'll, we'll work with you. We'll keep, find a person that can cover within that same calendar, notify the front desk, and we'll make it happen. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. <laughs> It good? It's real easy to switch. So normally everyone's willing to switch a day or whatnot with, with people. So. Yeah, we have a great family here. We support each other. Yes, Miss Rima. Yeah, do we get any um, in advance notice like you're going to be scheduled on this? Yes. Date? Okay. So um, the day prior, so let's say tomorrow is your shift, Miss Rima. You're scheduled to work at 1130. Uh, by no later than four o'clock, and sometimes I get really busy, so I apologize if, I, if it's after that. I'll say, Miss Rima, a friendly reminder: uh, shift uh, property desk from 11:30 to 2:30 for Friday, August 14th. Please, uh, we'll, we'll transfer the cost to your cell phone. Stay safe or stay close to your phone. I'll put something, a little message there, and I'll send it to you. Okay. 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 Sure. So, trust me. I'll be on you like white on rice. <laughs> <laughs> My priority is to make sure you guys succeed, but also it's, it's as the clients get taken care of. Because it's, it's not just you building your business. We're also representing Keller Williams and the value of Keller Williams that we have to offer. That's our number one in, in the world. That's our number one and best employer for women. I make sure you're an entrepreneur. Sorry, saying you're in there too. We'll be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you're out number today my friend uh, <laughs> but we're here to take care of each other so don't ever think you have a silly question there's no such thing as silly questions um carla i have a question i'm sorry no worries so, <laughs> so it's is property time i believe four to six a month or is it once a week how does that go again Again, uh, it's based on the criteria that you put on the property desk. So, for example, if you're dual career, you get to schedule. Um, I know it's very difficult because sometimes they don't give the schedule at your regular job. I don't know if they do it a month out. I don't know how that works for you guys. Um, but if you have your schedule, say, on the bottom, and I know it's very hard to see, but when I scan it, you'll see it right there. Yes. And it's, there's not very much room here, but you can always point an arrow and right on the back cannot work let's say for example august 4th uh, september 1st through september 15th so from that that whole time frame you're not going to get on the property list. so you have less chances of being in the property if you cannot work weekdays cannot work monday through friday so you only have the weekends available to work those shifts 
Okay, so I guess what I'm, I, sh I guess I should have asked was um, how many maximum can you get a month? Great question. The computer generates it. So oh, it's all okay. based on criteria. And the reason why the computer generates it is because I don't want people coming to me and getting mad at me saying, oh my God, I got like 25 days and I only got like one. That's okay. not fair. So, <laughs> and that's well, my daughter's impression. That's how she talks. <laughs> Normally, I, do, I, I get about five to six. Okay, okay. okay. That's okay. And if you're willing to pick up shifts, um, like I said, most people are, are willing to switch with you or just give it to you. If they can't switch, whatever it is. So this farm okay. is uh, every month you're going to pay, uh, fill it out, or is it like once every month? Every month. So on this little portion right here, it says, for the month up. So anything you fill out today, you have until the 25th to turn this into maybe for the month of September. Okay. okay. So in September, we'll do it all over again. Two meetings, two classes, that'll be for the month of October and so on and so forth. Until you decide, you know, property test is not for me anymore. I have like 25 listings in my pocket. I don't want to do this anymore. But Ms. Zoe, she's been with us for five years and she still doesn't because it's a steady income. People are always needing a place to live. People are always needing leases, right? So, but I cannot answer anything. Anything else, please ask your PC coach uh, as, far as, as far as the split goes. Um, I'm not familiar with that, and I hate to give you the wrong answer. Anything contract-related, uh, ask your PC coach. That's why we have them here. And I hope we were able to enlighten you guys a little bit. I, I love the fact that you guys were very engaging. This makes me very, very, very happy. Uh, thank you again, Ms. Zoe, for joining us and, and being such a light in this because I would have been lost without you. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, I have to drive all the way to Katie. Okay. I live in Katie, so I'll see you, I'll hear you guys tomorrow, and I'll send you these forms tomorrow morning, if that's all right. Just make sure you send me your your email, letting me know you were in this class, so I can send you the forms, uh, scan them over to you tomorrow morning. Okay? Sure. Have a great evening. Bye. Thank you, Stay Thank safe. you so much. Stay, get into lots of trouble. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye, guys.